Hello Info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat bizarre discovery coming out of Princeton University. And here this is actually based on something researchers were trying to disprove at first, but it ended up being true. And that something is, in some sense, free energy. And specifically the ability to generate electricity from the spin of the planet itself. And though here we're not talking about a lot of electricity or a lot of energy, it is still a really exciting discovery, assuming of course it's proven to be correct. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's first start with the basics on how technically this would work. And here the idea is really based on the differences between the magnetic field and the rotation of the planet. And that's because the spin of the planet is technically a little bit misaligned compared to the magnetic field. So basically here our planet has two distinct axes. And the Earth's magnetic axis has an inclination of about 11.5 degrees to the axis of rotation. Which basically means that the magnetic poles and the rotational poles are not exactly in the same place. And as we know today, magnetic poles are also not really stable and tend to drift over time. For example, here's how the North magnetic pole changed in the last five centuries. And so because of these minute differences, in certain locations on the planet, it should be possible to basically feel the passage through the magnetic field as the Earth spins around its rotational axes. And for a very long time, physicists were trying to figure out if there was actually any way to maybe capture this and to obviously use this for electricity. But in 2016, Christopher Chiba and Kevin Hand essentially explained a lot of these principles mathematically, in some sense proving that it should be technically impossible because any electron pushed by the Earth's magnetic field would very likely rearrange itself and then cancel out any potential difference in charge. Or in other words, if we were to somehow use this motion through the magnetic field to produce an electric field, it would very likely completely cancel out and thus produce nothing. Although in this paper they also provided one exception. Here they realized that in certain conditions with certain materials and possibly certain shapes, it actually might be possible to capture something. Although back in 2016, this was entirely hypothetical. And quite a lot of previous studies essentially established the same. It should be impossible to generate any voltage because electrons would just cancel themselves out and not produce any electric field. But because of this unusual exception, for the past nine years, these researchers decided to basically find out if it's possible after all, assuming they can actually create some kind of a special shape. And so in this recent study, once again, Christopher Chiba, Kevin Hand, and Thomas Chiba decided to figure out if it's possible to prevent this cancellation of electrons and if it's possible to maybe capture the voltage. And well, it turns out that this was not just some kind of a loophole or some kind of an exception in their proof, because in this case, they seem to have succeeded. They managed to produce continuous voltage observed in various conditions, which seemed to be coming out of nowhere. And so what exactly did they do and what exactly is happening? And well, their special device was actually not that special after all. It was essentially a cylinder. But it had to be made out of something very specific. And in this case, something with a very low magnetic Reynolds number. This was basically to encourage magnetic diffusion and to prevent magnetic fields from being constrained. With the material used being manganese zinc ferrite. And here they essentially turned this into a 29.9 centimeter tube, or basically an almost a foot long tube, that was then positioned in a very specific inclination. It was oriented 57 degrees in the north-south direction and basically in the way you see right here. Or in other words, it was positioned perpendicularly to both the magnetic field and the rotational field. And then by placing electrodes on both sides in order to measure voltage and by also preventing any potential external disturbances, they discovered that it was actually generating a little bit of voltage, approximately 18 microvolts. Not a lot, but still something. Although naturally here this could be produced by something else. For example, the famous Seebeck effect or the temperature gradient can also produce a bit of a voltage. And in order to account for that, they basically replaced this cylinder with another one made out of something else and also changed the orientation first by 90 degrees and then by 180 degrees. And interestingly, the voltage completely disappeared with a different cylinder, but more importantly, the voltage reversed if the cylinder was rotated 180 degrees. And in order to see if this was just the location, researchers also repeated this experiment in a different place and got the exactly same results. In other words, there was definitely something exciting happening here. Because right now, it's really uncertain where this voltage can be possibly coming from. But because in this case, it seems to match the original predictions from 2016, 
It really does look like maybe it's being produced by the magnetic field interaction after all. So there's a very high chance right now that they basically produced free energy due to the rotation of the planet. But here the researchers themselves are being super cautious. As a matter of fact, they're encouraging everyone else to try to recreate this in order to see if there's maybe another explanation or this is just based on some kind of a phenomenon that's not being considered in this study. I mean, for all we know, maybe this is actually from some kind of a Wi-Fi transmission nearby that seems to be captured by the cylinder. But at least for now, in theory, it potentially is possible to generate electricity using very specific cylinders made out of very specific materials if they're oriented in such a way where they actually get to interact with the magnetic field and with the axis of rotation of the planet. Which basically also violates their previous conclusion from 2016 where they suggested that no conductor at rest should be able to generate power from the magnetic field. But I guess the biggest caution in this case is just the fact that this is an extremely tiny amount of voltage. Right now this is approximately 1 million times less voltage than is usually required to charge a modern smartphone. So I guess technically if we somehow created a million of these tubes you could charge your phone for free. But I guess more realistically even if this is a real phenomenon and if there's a way to capture this energy using this method, just like a lot of previous propositions involving some kind of a bizarre phenomenon to generate electricity, this one here might just not be efficient enough. For example, a few years back there was a craze about potentially generating electricity on for example sidewalks as people walk on them. This would use the so-called piezoelectric effect, or basically the effect from the pressure turning into electricity, but as we know this was just a fad and it's unlikely to ever be efficient enough or to basically work. Likewise, in one of the previous videos, we discussed the idea behind the thermoelectric generator, or even possibly generating energy just from your skin and from the heat on your body. And though obviously this sounded kind of cool on paper, once again just not efficient enough and not cheap enough to potentially produce enough for really anything. You can learn about some of these propositions in some of the previous videos in the description. And so basically here the conclusion is that even if there is a bit of electricity produced and even if this is an actual phenomenon, it's unclear if this can ever be scaled or become industrialized. It might obviously find some use in for example using different sensors, but it might not be useful enough to produce free energy that we can then actually use in our homes. Nevertheless, even in terms of science, this is a pretty exciting discovery a manganese zinc ferrite cylinder that seems to be able to generate electricity just by being placed on the surface of a rotating planet and by experiencing the magnetic field. Once again, this only works with relatively weak conductors. So basically this has to be a kind of a magnetic shield. But here after reading this, I actually kind of got reminded about something entirely different. The really old experiments from back in 2013-2014 involving so-called resonant cavity thrusters the famous impossible drive or EM drive. Once again there's a video in the description talking more about this, but back then, strangely enough, researchers were also detecting a somewhat minuscule but still present thrust which was potentially generated through electromagnetic means. And it'd be actually really interesting to find out if by some chance these two phenomena are actually connected. In other words, maybe what NASA was detecting here was nothing more but the effects from the magnetic field that were previously completely ignored. But I guess for now we don't really know and only future studies will be able to discover what's going on. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.